What's up, hello, and welcome to today's 360 Life video. In today's video, we are taking another look at the Oculus Quest. This time we are examining its cost and value compared to the other head-mounted displays currently on the consumer market. So stay tuned. Welcome back and thanks for sticking around. If you have any questions as we progress through the video today, throw it out there in the comments below. If I can't answer it, I bet someone watching can. Now, getting on with it. We know the Oculus Quest is going to hit the shelves at $399 and soon. But what does that really mean? What do you get for that $399? And how does it compare to the other HMDs already on the market? First, let's take a look at how the Quest lines up against other mobile platforms. The Oculus Quest goes on sale starting at $399. It delivers 1600 by 1440 per eye resolution with a 100 degree field of view and a 72 hertz refresh rate. It utilizes four cameras for inside out tracking with a full six degrees of freedom experience. It is a standalone handset and requires no additional hardware. Pros, no wires, full six degrees of freedom with high resolution and good built-in audio. While it's hard to find cons, some would be it is based on a mobile CPU, it's not on the market yet, and battery life with a wireless device is a concern. The Oculus Go starts at 199 and it pumps out 1280 by 1444 resolution per eye. Still delivers 100 degrees field of view and offers a refresh rate of either 60 or 72 hertz depending on the title. This is a three degree of freedom headset with a orientational tracked controller. No extra hardware needed as it is a standalone headset. Lots of pros. It's 100% standalone. It has a large library of games and apps, has good resolution and good built in audio. Its cons are it's only a three degree a Freedom headset, it utilizes a mobile CPU, and it has a somewhat short battery life and long charge times. Next is the Gear VR. Priced at somewhere between $85 and $100, but has been the subject of many giveaways. It has a resolution of 1080 by 1080 per eye, with 100 degrees field of view and a refresh rate of 60 Hz. It is a three degree of freedom solution with a controller and it requires a Samsung Gear VR compatible phone. Pros, there are a lot of compatible phones on the market. It does have a large library of apps, apps and games available. And if you already own a phone, it is an inexpensive solution. Cons, again, you need a compatible phone it is a three degree of freedom only experience. It has a poor audio quality from the phone and development is certainly going to dwindle with the other newer headsets coming to market. And last is the Lenovo Mirage Solo, priced at $399, offering a resolution of 1280 by 1440 per eye it has a wide 110 degrees of field of view and a 75 hertz refresh rate. This is a six degrees of freedom headset, but it does not have hand tracking currently, so it is a strictly an orientationally tracked controller. It doesn't require any additional hardware as it is completely standalone. And some of its pros are it is indeed standalone. It does have expandable storage and it has the same CPU as the Oculus Quest. Some of its cons are there is no hand tracking. It has no built in audio. It only has two sensors for HMD tracking, and it does not have nearly the developer support as some of the other platforms we've looked at previous to this. To me, the Quest is the clear winner against other mobile and standalone headsets. You just can't beat its specs 
And while the Oculus Go is a great deal at $199, for $399, you can get a full six degrees of freedom experience with an updated CPU for truly immersive gaming. Now let's see how the Quest compares to the PC and console-based headsets. The Oculus Rift, priced at $349 with 1080 by 1200 per eye resolution, offering 100 degrees of field of view with a 90 hertz refresh rate. It is a full six degrees of freedom headset with external cameras. And of course, it does require a high end PC. Some of the pros are, of course, six degrees of freedom. It is very comfortable to wear. It has good controllers and a great library. Some of the cons, well, it's not room scale, and I guess it can be considered pricey when you factor in the high-end VR PC. The HTC Vive, priced at $499. It offers a 1080 by 1200 per eye resolution with 100 degrees field of view and at 90 hertz refresh rate. It uses external lighthouses to provide a full six degrees of freedom experience, and a high-end VR PC is required. Pros, well, six degrees of freedom, room scale. It does have wireless capabilities with, with additional hardware, and it has a great library. Cons, pricey, and wires. PlayStation VR runs $198, has a resolution of a 960 by 1080 per eye. It has a 110 degree field of view with a 90 hertz refresh rate. It does have optical tracking, which gives you six degrees of freedom, and it requires a PlayStation 4, a camera, and controllers. Some of the pros are it is a six degrees of freedom experience, it's relatively inexpensive, it's easy to use and set up, and it does have a good library of games to choose from. Some of the cons, well, it has low resolution, and the tracking isn't the best of the bunch. Well, we see the Quest compares well to the PC headsets specs-wise, and in my mind, it is superior to the PlayStation's offering. We know the Quest doesn't have the horsepower to drive PC-level graphics, but if you are looking for a mobile headset and or have a zero interest in investing in a high-end PC, then the Quest makes a lot of sense. While I think the Quest is a good choice for a first VR system, it also makes me anxious to want to start seeing the next gen of HMDs come to the PC platform. I think that's enough for this video. I hope you found something useful, especially if you are trying to make up your mind if the Oculus Quest is right for you. And if you like today's video, I hope you decide to subscribe, drop us a like, or just say hey. But most importantly, don't forget to enjoy that 360 life.